Whoa. All right, guys, what's up? Today's day 205 of grinding until I become a millionaire. These are my daily check-in videos where I talk about what I'm doing, what I'm working on, and how I plan uh, to become a millionaire. So, uh, yeah. Yesterday I did the check-in super late because I didn't do it the night before, so I did it at like 4 p.m. yesterday. So this is the check-in of yesterday, the following day again. I didn't go to bed till like three or four last night. And I don't, I don't know, here's where I'm at with that stuff. Like, I don't necessarily say that to brag because when I was sleeping more, I think my life was a little bit better. And very soon, I'm gonna try and find balance. And um, I was talking to somebody last night, she's like, what do you do to relax? And I'm like, what's that, you know? <laughs> and um, so, this good friend of mine, I really like this guy, he's super inspirational to me, he gave me a couple different books. And um, he's building his own course off of some of the stuff that he learned from these books, this course, all that. And there's like four areas that you need to improve on. And it makes sense now. It didn't make sense before, but it's like one of those was balance and, you know, making the time to relax and find yourself. And it doesn't have to be like, it could be as simple as going to the gym. It could be as simple as just unwinding a little bit. And maybe that's what I need to do. I don't know. I don't know. But when I was sleeping a little bit more, cause I was like depressed, <laughs> my head was a lot clearer. Cause I just go to bed at 10, wake up at six or seven. And I felt pretty good. No, no energy drinks. Like it was good. Now I go to bed at like four, I wake up at eight and I just feel like shit for an hour. And then I finally get out of bed and I still feel like shit. And then I'm just like, it just don't, I don't feel as quick and clear. Um, so that's something that I think I'm going to start working on. If you guys are new, I have a small social media agency. Before that, I was trying to grow my YouTube channel and make a lot of money from that. And uh, I was serving part-time. Now I'm doing the social media agency pretty much full-time and still making money from YouTube, but not as much. Um, I'm at this weird point with the social media agency where I should make about 10K a month. And that's wonderful. And what's not wonderful is the growing pains that I'm having. So. Month one, when I started and I got a couple clients, I realized quickly that I had to expand the edit, like get somebody to edit. So I found some freelancers, got them to edit. Life was quite a bit better. And um, because I didn't have the bandwidth to do it. Like I knew that if I, um, I have finished eating this fucking piece of chicken and then I, I'll wait to eat my food. I thought I could film this and eat my food. I can't, hold up. Of course it's like a dry piece, so that's fun. Okay. Hold on. Just double tap the screen and skip ahead. So month one, once I got a couple clients, I tried my best to edit the content and I quickly found, okay, I can't do this. And in my head, when I was doing my own YouTube videos, it was like, okay, putting this out there, maybe making money in the future off of ad revenue and stuff, I can't justify making a video and paying for it. But when I started charging clients, I realized, okay, well, if I make $500 a month and I need to make 120, or whoa, 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 12 videos, I can pay whatever, 10, 15 bucks, for the videos, even though I could do it for a lot cheaper, but then I can keep the spread and then I can find more clients. And that was just crucial, crucial, crucial for me to figure out early on. And that helped because, you know, it's probably 80 hours of editing for the 40 videos that I need, maybe 40, but um, 40 to 80. And that's just so much. And so then as I grew and as I expanded, I could just turn up the, the volume on the editing and it was okay. Um, now I'm getting to the point where I need to, I need to find good editors, uh, more good editors. My editor that I have is incredible. He's, he's good, the workflow is simple, and it works very well for me, but we're getting to the point where he's getting bogged down. And so it is important to me that deadlines are hit and that we have just a clear thing. It works pretty good right now, um, but I'm thinking maybe I need to just hire an editing agency essentially so I can just, here's all the clips, here's all the shit to figure it out. Like you, 
you know, if there's an editing agency with editors and then a middle person to source, the, you know, figure out the content, all of that. And I've seen some of them where they have a $4,000 a month plan or five. And it's like, we will plan the video ideas for you. We'll do all this. And so we'll see. I had a call this morning with one. I guess that's getting into today and not yesterday. Um, I had a call with one. They said the volume they couldn't do. I mean, they could. I'd have to stack a lot of $2,500 a month plans. But it sounds like they're coming out to way less than, or way more than $10 a reel, which I don't want to spend any more than that on it. I, I need to get that price down. And that might look like hiring in-house, but I'm, I'm not at the point where that makes sense. Like maybe if I got some funding and built out like a small editing space and then hired people for 20 bucks an hour and figured that they were getting their video to 15. I don't know, dude, this, it's so hard. It is so hard figuring out the system, but it's crucial because like I said, it's this weird growing pain right now where I don't know that we can even handle what we have right now, much less moving it up. And so I'm quickly realizing it's very, very, very important that I move my lower price clients up closely to that to a little bit closer to where I want to be and then not take anybody for less than what I want to be because then I can outsource what I need to outsource and still deliver them good results that's the other part I don't want to be skimping on quality because I could go find a random ass editor that's not very good and say hey make videos and they're going to be shitty videos I'm going to pay 10 bucks and boom bang done but then now my service isn't as good right the videos aren't as effective and that's my main product so I really need to invest in that maybe that means spending more and which if I charge more I can spend more and that's okay but um, where it's at right now is like I'm making this much I'm spending this much and and I'm barely keeping this much and so I was like sure it's not gonna be a million dollar business if I can't figure out how to keep more fucking money and it's all me it's I'm the problem that's the cool thing about owning a business is like you're the problem you're also the solution so I got to figure out what that is um, yesterday was a big focus on just cleaning every Sunday I make sure I vacuum I mop I meal prep I just clean as much as I can and just get shit situated I'm not psycho I don't scrub the floors or anything but just it's nice to have a nice clean space especially starting out the week so that throughout the week I get busy and stressed out, at least like the house isn't a complete disaster and then it just compounds on top of itself. So I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, groceries for meal prepping, meal prepping. Um, yeah, and I spent the morning with, with someone who hung out and then I spent, um, so anyway. <laughs> Then let's see, uh, the big focus last night, what I was up to like four doing was one, just kind of sorting through the menial things on the to-do list that I needed to do, but also get more official, get more, you know, business. And I talked about this yesterday, like I need to have set prices, explain the value and be done with it. Set prices, explain the value, be done with it, book a call, see if it's a fit buy it, I guess, whatever. And then I need to have an onboarding call. I need to have the checklist that I need to get done. I need to have a contract. And I spent a lot of time, lawyer GPT was helping me make a contract. And um, I, I think what I'll do is somebody suggested uh, rocket lawyer and then putting it in GPT to tweak it based on what I need. So maybe maybe I'll do that so I know it's, it's legal. But um, that's something reading through that and going through the process of putting that together. I was like, you know, this shit is important because it, it outlines what I'm going to deliver. It outlines what they're going to get. It outlines where we can expect things from, from each other. And that's been crucial because it hasn't happened a lot, but the few times it has happened where there's a miscommunication, it kind of throws everything into the loop or, you know, throws everything out and just makes it a lot more stressful than it needs to be. So by outlining that, and it gave me a really good idea. Um, Hermosi was mentioning, you can do a guarantee. And a cool thing is a prepayment guarantee. So if I do a three month retainer at this much per month, then they can, um, they can book. And they're, they're in that retainer because within these, I need these three months to get results. Cool. If you prepay, it's gonna be $2,000 off for that, that whole quarter. And I guarantee you're going to get more view leads and sales because I have that money up front to reinvest, blah, blah, blah. 
then I can guarantee that. And so now it's like, okay, you save money and there's a guarantee associated with it where if you don't get X, you get all your money back. It's a little risky, but I, I think it's, it works out just fine, I hope. We'll find out. If I do it and I can't deliver on it, then I have a very expensive learning process, but I'm okay with that because it's so early on. Like, I'd rather figure that shit out right now than on year three, you know what I mean? I'd rather figure it out right now and just be like, okay, I need to tweak this guarantee because this is not, I can't deliver unless I'm running the ads or unless I have the ad budget or whatever. Um, so doing that, that really helped me get the clarity there and it helped me figure out what my different offerings are. Course, do it yourself, done for you, and then steroids. Lots of money, partnered with a bigger agency with a studio to do this one. This one, done for you. This one, do it yourself, it's course. Here's the tools, figure it out, right? And then the other part is figuring out what my sawdust is. What are the things that my business has the infrastructure to deliver on that I could sell without being the delivery? And to me, if I have an editing agency or I have an editing team, selling just editing is something that's possible. Um, and I don't think it adds very much onto it. Don't know, we'll see. I mean, a white label software that most of the editing people, editing agencies use, if I had that, that I use personally with my editors to submit the client edits that I need, then I also could sell sub accounts or whatever, white label it and sell people into it for just the editing. Like thinking about things like that, I think is what's really gonna help me because if I'm making, let's say I get to 100K a month from just the done for you service, getting another five, 10K a month would be pretty chill with just the editing, you know what I mean? So always keeping my head out that way. But um, so yeah, so that's where we're at currently. I'm trying to get to 20K is the next milestone. Just hit that, I need to, with the three months, I think I can keep client retention a little bit better. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at the numbers. I was looking at my expenses, so that was a part of it yesterday, is like kind of budgeting out where my money's going, what I'm spending it on. And it's really easy for me to just sign up for a subscription that I think might help me. And then, um, and then forget about it or use it a little bit, but not all the time. And so I went through last month's bank statement, looked at all the subscriptions that I had, mapped it out, I was spending like a grand altogether. Now, to be fair, one of those is like a $400 subscription with uh, a co-working space, right? One's the agency subscription with high level or yeah, the agency. Uh, one's my social, my white label social pilot. So there's a lot of big expenses in there. And unfortunately I can't cancel any of those ones. So I canceled some of the little ones and brought it down like a like hundred bucks, but being more aware of that stuff can help because like whatever I cut off of there is profit, right? So if, um, it's just found profit and looking, taking a deeper look into that side of things, the financial side, making sure that I'm doing better and being more like a business. If, if I had an employee, I would be fucking pissed if they just signed up for random ass subscriptions. I'd be like, what, the, what are you doing? But then I'll do it. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, if I had an employee that was responsible for either the growth of the company, I'd be like, do you really need Riverside? Do you really need um, Autopod? Like we're not doing podcasts anymore. Like, do you really, really need that? I'll sign up for it, test it out. And then if somebody else did that, I'd be like, mm-mm. So that's, that's interesting. I need to think about it more that way. I have the e-myth up there. I need to reread. I listened to it a while ago and I just, it wasn't, I wasn't at that point. Maybe I'm at that point now. Maybe I'm still not at that point. I don't know. But anyway, that's day 205. We'll see how day 206 goes. I'll keep you guys updated. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any ideas on how I can become a millionaire, please let me know. I need all the help that I can get. Okay, bye.